went black. It was all pervasive. It was never ending. The smell of sulfur. We started running home. We ended up getting caught in it. Todos los árboles quedaron sin hojas. It actually covered the sky. It totally blocked out the sun. When that first explosion went off that Monday morning, and I remember I could have seen that ash spreading across so dark. If the ash cloud is coming towards you, you can see it just darkening as it comes. It just killed all light. And that causes huge problems in people driving, people trying to move, people trying to evacuate. It causes people to panic. People having a little bit of scream, you know, and then a whole chatter start and everybody was wondering, hey, is this, is this a big one? It was raining mud and we tried to drive. The windscreen wipers couldn't clean the ash and mud off the windscreen. So we drove home, opening the driver's side door and just watching the roadside curb and it went from raining mud to raining sand to raining stones. And at midnight we were thinking, is it ever going to stop? If you have thick ash deposits on the roofs of buildings and then you have rain, the ash basically turns to concrete. About half a metre is enough to collapse most house roofs. Branches collapsing. You're just listening around the forest and it snaps. You have problems breathing, um, it gets into your mouth, into your hair, into your eyes as well, and it's just everywhere. You get the feeling like I'm covered with powder, flour. So a lot of people start wearing long sleeve shirts and button right up to the neck, and the ash mass start coming in. You're feeling ash beneath your feet. You try to clean your homes, there's always ash. You're feeling it between your teeth, you know, on your bed when you lay down, you're still feeling it. I, I used to say to myself, how long uh, that we can ever go on with this? We prayed for rain, because when it rained, you could open all the windows and you could breathe fresh air and, you know. In one sense, it was very disadvantageous to us because it killed the young plants, but in another sense, it made the land more fertile. Ash has those chemical components where it enriches the soil. So we have to say we live with it and we live through it. It was a blessing in disguise and it was not also a blessing. But with the ash comes fertility. So a lot of farmers were glad also. <laughs> Lo que podemos contar a nuestros hijos. Cómo ha sido, por ejemplo, lo que ha botado la ceniza. Cómo ha sido la misma erupción al botar la lava. Es algo bonito, pero que tengan mucho cuidado si están cerca. Ciertas cenizas que tiene abundante componente químico destruye las flores de las plantas. Y al destruirlos no hay cosecha. Entonces, eh, con la ceniza y todos los cambios que ha habido de la, por la erupción, eh, ha, hemos optado solamente por el, el cultivo de lo que es el maíz. El choclo rápido madura, pero se puede cultivar tranquilamente. La ceniza cuando cae, la ceniza blanca en los cultivos, y en especialmente cuando cae con agua, se pega y se quema las hojitas. En las hojas de los cultivos se hace como tipo pasta. Hay que limpiar con ramas y todo eso, pero igual no, no se puede limpiar de, de por completo. Hay que cambiar para sobrevivir, hacer cultivos de ciclo corto. La cebolla aguanta es por lo que son como chavitos y no, no da lugar a sentarse en la ceniza. Eso nos pasó en la erupción y cayó en nuestras casitas 
y quedamos sin ellas porque era todo colapsado totalmente y no nos soportó en este caso lo que es de ternir, eh, teja, nada de eso, sino solo quedaron las casitas de losa. A veces también el peso ha afectado eh, los techos en que ellos mismos, por tener tanta ceniza con el agua de lluvia, ya se pone demasiado peso y se colapsa. Hay que cuidarse del, del ambiente. Tenemos que protegernos.